Kenya and we have a reason to celebrate uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh. And now with the joy of the Lord, I want you to help me to welcome Her Excellency, Reverend uh, Dolkaz uh, Gashagwa to come and speak to us. Uh. We have a reason, Kenya. Kenya, we have a reason. We give you praise, our God. We love you, Jesus. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again. If you are the daughter and the son of Zion, praise the Lord. If you are the sons and daughters of Zion, can you give a praise in the house? It goes even better if you are the sons and daughters of God manifested for this generation. Can you give God a praise and a shout? <laughs> Father, we give you thanks. 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 Father, we give you glory. Father, we give you thanks. Father, we give you thanks. As a people, we give you thanks. As a people, we give you thanks. As a nation, we give you thanks. We glorify you for your goodness and your mercies that have endured and that will endure forevermore. You can get a seat, please. Let me give my accolades to our fathers of faith, Archbishop Arthur Kitonga. It is good to give praise to God. He has seen us for years and generations have seen fathers. We want to thank God for Archbishop Arthur Kitonga. Bishop Mamboleo, all the fathers of faith present here, our director and the greatest intercessor I respect, our father William Kemani. the National Prayer Committee who have put this together. And every one of us who is here as clergy, intercessors, sons and daughters of God, saints of God and the army that is rising for revival to come. My name is Pastor Dr. Dokas Wanjiko Rigadi. And I always say that before you can call me Her Excellency, that has come by grace. But Pastor Dokas has come by calling an ordination. <laughs> and I value my calling because it is the one that has brought me this far. I have an assignment, and so have you. And so when you hear excellency, the excellency is by grace, and it is the responsibility and the accountability that God has placed on our shoulders together with our president, 
his wife, my husband, the deputy president, whom I hear you call Rigi G, <laughs> and myself. And I can tell you, I fear and tremble before God. When I think of what God is saying in this season, I can only give thanks. And I just want, I don't want to keep you for very long. You know, preachers, when we are given the microphone and you have gathered so many a people, we could preach until tomorrow. But I want just to say a few things. And I'm out of here and you can have the break and we can come and listen to our Father. One of the things that any person who is under the sun must understand is that Thanksgiving is a gift of God. Amen. This Thanksgiving is so powerful a thing that in Psalm 100, verse 4, they say it is a key to the courtyards of our God. So if you want to open the doors of heaven, you must use the Thanksgiving. He said, enter his gates with thanksgiving. And that tells you that giving thanks is such a powerful weapon in the kingdom. And you must always be thankful to this God. The other thing about thanksgiving, it is a multiplier and an increaser of grace. When Jesus wanted to feed the 4,000 and the 5,000, the first thing he did was to give thanks to the Lord. And there was a multiplication. And because you came to give thanks, and you took your time and you're here, there is going to be multiplication and increase or peace in the country of Kenya. There is going to be peace and there is going to be multiplication of increase in your families. There's going to be increase and multiplication in your ministries because you came to give thanks. And you can give God a crap offering. Because we have a father who is able to design the times and the seasons and be able to bring you before God with the key of thanksgiving and with the key of multiplier and increaser of the things that you have been believing God for. And therefore, as First uh, Timothy uh, chapter 2 and verse 1 and 2, Paul admonishes us and says, you must give prayer and supplication and intercession with thanksgiving. And if anything is going to happen for all men, you must give thanks, pray, intercede. And I have been seeing our father, we, uh, Bishop Williams, Apostle William, always giving intercession, supplication, and prayers of all kinds. And now thanksgiving. It goes past two to say that the authorities that are there we will have peace with the church. Amen. Jesus looks at the nine who had come back. Nine had come back. Not nine, but one out of ten had come back. And he asked, where did the other ones go? Did they get, not get healed? Many people are looking at the peace that we have in Kenya and they don't understand it is the grace of God. This country would have gone into frames had not God been on our side. So we can say like our children have said, this God is a good God and his mercies endures forever. Finally, I know that up to this time, our country and nations of the earth are groaning in pain and suffering. That is Romans 8.22. That every creation is groaning in pain and suffering, waiting to be liberated 
and who are they waiting? They are waiting until now. When you sit here as the sons and daughters of Zion, sons and daughters of the king, to be able to liberate them through your prayers, through your intercession, and through the actions that you are going to take. Because revival has just begun. It has been my prayer, and I'm an intercessor. And very soon, we are going to have this field, this Kasarani, filled with the intercessors. We are going to intercede for this nation. And after that, I believe, together with my mother, who I respect tremendously, Her Excellency Rachel Ruto, we are going to have 47 prayers one day across the nation to intercede and to thank God for what he has done. This nation has been bathed in prayer and the whole world is watching to see what is going to happen to Kenya. And for that reason, you must rise up. You have a responsibility. As we sit there and you say that you have a God-fearing uh, government, I want you to know you have a responsibility. You have been praying. You have been praying. You have been praying. But now we are sending you to pray even more. Our president asked us to pray for the economy. I'm asking you to pray not only for the economy, but I want you to pray for revival to come. With our thanksgiving today, I know as we stand here because I'll ask uh, our, uh, our apostle to give me just five minutes for us to pray. Because I'm an intercessor, sometimes I don't know how to end without a prayer. So I would want us to pray for something. Jesus, when he was raising Lazarus, he prayed for restoration of, and resurrection of a soul. He did not doubt. He knew that when he calls his father, he would answer. We have a father. We have a father for this nation. We have a father for this Africa. We have a father for our children who are in drugs. And as a mother, I stand here and I'm asking you to pray for our children. They are the generations we are watching for tomorrow. And I want you, as you go to pray, we will be calling you because I want to start something for rehabilitating the entire network of our youth. I'll be calling upon the pastors and the people of goodwill, the doctors and all the other people so that we can give them a rehabilitation that is both physical and spiritual. Our bishop, you may know that every home, if you ask every mother, and this makes me cry inside and intercede, every home is crying and sighing over this alcohol and drug addiction. It does not know whether it is from a poor family or a rich family. We are both crying alike. It doesn't, it, it doesn't this addiction is a demon. It is transversing all color, all race, all tribe. And therefore, it is a demon that we must confront as fathers and mothers of this nation. We cannot watch and see a generation destroyed when we have the answer. And it is in prayer and support and loving those young people so that we have a future. So now you have something to pray and give thanks for. We want to thank God because our generation is not going to be lost. We are going to thank God because the economy of this country is going to thrive. It is going to be multiplied by God himself. 
so that when they are rehabilitated, these children will have jobs to do. And there will be no more tears for mothers if you are with me. There will be no more tears for the fathers. And every home shall stand. Please stand, let us pray.